and welcome to GCSE Particle Model of Matter. This is Mrs Castanera teaching and we're on Lesson 8, Specific Heat Capacity. Today's keywords are heat, capacity and substance. And here we have the specification for the course, which runs us through everything we'll be learning in this lesson. And then we have the knowledge check. So I'd like you to complete the eight questions on the knowledge check and pause the video whilst you do that, please. OK, let's go through those questions. So uh, make sure you're marking in a pen of a different colour to the pen you wrote in. Question one, name the energy store of a moving particle. That's kinetic energy. Question two, name the two energy stores combined in internal energy. That's kinetic and chemical potential, or just potential energy. Question three, which state has the most kinetic energy? That's gas or plasma if you've written that. But gas is what I want you to write down if you haven't written it. Question four, temperature is a measure of the average what? That is the average kinetic energy of the particles of the substance. So kinetic energy of the particles, that's the key part you need to get for the mark. Question five, what remains constant during a state change? Well, temperature remains constant. Question six, what is conserved in a state change? That would be mass. Question seven, make volume the subject of the density equation. So that would be volume equals mass divided by density. Question eight, what two energy stores make internal energy? So again, it's very similar to question two. That's kinetic and chemical potential. Okay, so give yourself a mark out of eight there, please. So questions two and eight, although there were two answers to them, uh, there is only one mark for both those answers. So it's mark out of eight, please. So today's uh, learning plan is that we're going to be able to, by the end of the lesson, recall the definition for specific heat capacity. We are also going to be able to apply the equation for specific heat capacity. So in essential, in summary, today's lesson is about specific heat capacity. Moving on to page nine. Specific heat capacity. So you should recall from the energy topic that the definition of specific capacity is as follows, which is the specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of energy that is needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of the substance by one degree Celsius. So how much energy is required for one, de one kilogram to become one degree hotter? Okay, so you need to learn that definition. Okay, so learn this. Okay, and try and take just a minute or two, pause the video, take a minute or two to learn this definition. Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, so checkpoint question. State the equation used to calculate the temperature change when a substance is heated give the appropriate units. There's two parts to this. What's the equation that is used to calculate the temperature change uh, when we heat a substance? And what are the units for this? Pause the video whilst you answer this question, please. OK, so let's go through that. So there's two ways you may have written it. You may have written it in symbol form, which is delta, which is a triangle. E for energy, so the change in energy uh, is M multiplied by C multiply by delta, which is the triangle, and this symbol here is theta. So if you've written this out, you may also, you can have the mark. If you've also, you may have written it, delta E equals M C delta theta. That is also absolutely fine. Either of those is good. You may have written it out in full. So the change in thermal energy is equal to the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. OK, so any one of those three is suitable for the mark. Now, when it comes to units, the units we want for the change in thermal energy is joules, J, capital J. OK, so that is joules. Uh, the temperature for mass is going to be kilograms. 
Okay, and the temp uh, sorry, the temperature, the unit, so mass is kilograms, the unit for specific heat capacity, uh, you might not have known this one, is joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. So that is a capital J forward slash, so it's divided by kilograms degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's the units for specific heat capacity. And the change in temperature is going to be in degrees Celsius. Okie dokie. The important one here is that you've got joules as your answer for the appropriate units. That's the one we want for the mark. So there are two marks available here. So give yourself a mark out of two. First mark for the equation being correct. Second mark for the units being joules. So we're going to move on. So now we're going to look at rearranging the specific heat capacity equation to make C the subject. Now, we need to remember what SHC is, is and what C is. So we're going to make some notes on this. So SHC is specific. And C, C is the specific heat capacity. So lowercase c is the symbol for specific heat capacity. Now, here's the equation that you will recall from earlier. And in symbol form as well. So the units for this are written below. Change in thermal energy, delta, the delta E is in joules, capital J, mass M in kilograms, and we're going to write these in. So same as before, so that is joules, mass is kilograms, specific heat capacity is joules per kilogram degree C, and change of temperature is degrees Celsius. Okay, so they're all here. Mass M in kilograms, specific heat capacity C in joules per kilogram per degree Celsius, and temperature change delta theta uh, is degrees Celsius. Okay, and this symbol here, we're going to write this out, this is theta. Okay, that's a Greek symbol that means change, it means temperature. So, now we need to look at rearranging this equation. So, to rearrange an equation, we have to follow the rules. If a quantity moves across the equal sign, okay, so the operator, that's a plus, minus, divide, multiply, it changes. So, multiply will come divide. Uh, plus becomes minus. So, for example, if A equals B multiplied by C, then to remove it, uh, to remove uh, something from that, okay, then A divided by B will become C. So we have to get rid of B and divide both sides by B. And so what we end up actually doing, okay, and there's a middle step here, which I think I'll draw at the side here, is that it's a divided by B equals B divided by B, or multiplied by C. That's our middle step here. I'm going to highlight that. Okay. Now, you should know that if you have the same number on top and bottom on an equation, that just cancels it out. So you can just then cross that out. And you're left with A divided by B equals C. And that's how we get to that. Same thing happens here. Okay, so if A equals B divided by C, then we can change that to C equals B divided by A. And the way we're doing that is C, it must be left on its own. Okay, and so there's multiple steps here. A times C, and okay, so we're multiplying by C on both sides, that's going to equal B divided by C multiplied by C. And when we've got C above and below, we can cross them out. So this gives us, gets rid of the C on both of these because you can't have one above and below that's gone. So A multiplied by C equals B at this point. Well, that's great. But now we need to move the A to the other side. So at this point, we're going to do A times C, okay? And we're divided by A equals B divided by A. And this can then be crossed out because A divided by A just cancels itself out. And we end up with C equals b divided by a, which is exactly where we get to there. Okay, so you can see how that happens, okay? So now we need to apply this principle, and we need to apply it to this equation, okay? So let's have a look at how we do that. 
So we start out with our equation of delta E equals M times C times delta theta. So we're going to move M from the right hand side here to the left hand side. So we're going to divide both sides by M. To divide them both by M, we've got delta E divided by M and we get rid of the M on this side equals C times delta theta. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken M out from this side, we've divided it by M and we've divided this by M and that just gets rid of this part here. Okay, then moving on. Now we're going to move delta theta from the left hand side to the right hand side. No, that's, that's not written. That's written incorrectly from the right hand side to the left hand side. So what we're doing here is we're taking this equation here and we're dividing both sides by delta theta. So that gets rid of it here. And we're also dividing this by delta theta. So now we're going to have delta E divided by M multiplied by delta theta. Okay, because I'm going to show you this on this side here because what we, the way it's written isn't very helpful. So delta E divided by M equals C times delta theta. And we're dividing both sides by delta theta. Okay. So delta theta goes on this side here, and it gets removed here. Let's make sure you can see that properly. So because we've divided delta theta by itself here, we can cross that out. So we've got delta E divided by M times delta uh, theta equals C. And that's exactly where we're at. It's the same as this. And then you can just switch the sides around so that you rearrange it so that C equals, and you write everything just the opposite way around there, switching sides. And then you use bid mass, okay, so brackets, uh, indices, uh, divide, multiply, add, subtract, okay. So and you do your calculations in your brackets first. And so that's how we do our equations. So your task now is learning activity one, rearranging the SHC, the specific heat capacity equation, to make M the subject, which is what you do on this side, going down here. Okay, so these are the steps as you go down. All right, and to make delta theta the subject, which is temperature, and these ones are going to go down this side. Okay, so you've got to work your way down. There are two different columns. You start at the top, and you do step by step by step. Then there's a question, and you're going to answer the question in box six. So boxes one to four are for rearranging the equation step by step. And box six is for you to do the workings for the question. Same goes for this one. You rearrange it to make delta theta the subject using boxes one to four. So box four will have delta theta equals and box four on this side will have M equals. And then box six, you're going to do the questions. So pause the video whilst you do that, please. Okay, so we're going to go through the first one on the left hand side. So it's to rearrange this equation to make M the subject. Okay, so our aim here is to get the C and the delta theta onto the left hand side away from the M and then we'll switch the whole thing around. So our first step here. Okay, and if you were so stuck you didn't know where to start, then by all means follow this for a step, pause it and see if you can do the next step each time. So the first thing we've done here, okay, is we've got delta E already on the left-hand side. So we've divided both sides by delta theta. Now you could have done dividing both sides by C, that's also fine. So essentially we've done delta theta divided by delta theta, and that gets rid of it. So we have delta E divided by delta theta uh, equals M times C. So if you've done that, you can give yourself a tick, or if you've done the same thing, but with C instead. So the next step, is delta theta divided by C multiplied by delta, so delta E divided by C multiplied by delta theta in brackets. These two can be the other way around, that's absolutely fine. And that equals M. And then the fourth step is to switch the whole thing around so it's backwards. So M equals delta theta equals in brackets C multiplied by delta theta, or switch those two around, that's fine, delta theta multiplied by C. So that's that mark. So there's three marks there. You can do these two steps in either order. So our question is what mass of steel? So it wants to know mass, okay, which is good because M equals. And it's given us here 
uh, in joules per kilograms per Celsius, uh, the specific heat capacity of steel. So what mass of steel with this heat capacity experiences a 10 degrees Celsius temperature change if it receives 1000 joules of energy? Okay, so we have got delta E is 1000 joules, C uh, is 490, and delta theta is 10. So we're going to put those into our equation here, like so. So we've written the equation out first, that's step one. So you have a mark for writing the equation out. Step two, fill in the numbers. So 1,000 divided by 490 times 10. Mark two. So a uh, second way to get that next mark, the second mark, is to write out uh, m equals 1,000 divided by 4,900, which just shows that you've multiplied the 490 by 10. And then finally, for the last two marks, there's the answer, 0 0.20 kilograms. Now, if you've written it out, you might have written 0 0.204. Uh, that would be fine, but 0 0.20 or 0 0.2 is also fine. And another mark for the kilograms as the units. So this is a mark out of 1, 2, 3, 4. So give yourself a mark out of 4 for box 7, 5, 6, which I'm on the bottom box. And then it's marked out of two uh, because they've already done one for you here so there's a total out of six for this side and then we're going to move on to the other side of the equation other question okay so this time we're rearranging delta e uh, m equals m times c times delta theta to make delta theta the subject okay so the first thing we need to do is divide both sides by m okay and that removes the m from this side so what we've done here is just literally taken m and divided it by itself to remove it. Okay, so you get end up with delta e divided by m equals c times delta theta. So give yourself a mark if you've written that. If you've done it uh, here, so it's instead of like this, you've written divided by m instead of this part, that's also totally fine. Um, that's a very acceptable way of doing it. So for the next mark, you will have divided by C as well. Now you can divide by C first, then M, or M first, then C. It makes no real difference. So this time it's delta E divided by M multiplied by C in brackets. All of uh, that equals delta theta. Okay, you may have also written this slightly differently. You may have written delta E uh, divided by M times C. And in fact, when you write like this, you don't tend to need to use the brackets. So if you haven't used the brackets and you've done it like this, that's absolutely fine because it's implied. And that equals delta theta. So if you've written it like that, that's also very acceptable. So next mark is for uh, just switching it around to a different order. So starting out with delta theta and rewriting the same thing either like this or like that on the other side. So that's your third mark here. So there's three marks available for this. So give yourself a mark out of three for those ones. Then we're going to move on to the question. So the question asks us, what is the temperature change, so delta theta, if 100 kilograms, the mass of water, with a specific heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram per Celsius, in a passive solar heater system is supplied with 100 joules, which is the energy. So first mark is for writing out the equation. Okay, then like so, uh, the next mark is for putting in the numbers. So 100 divided by 100 times 4,200. Okay, so the 100 is the change in energy, which is the 100 joules. Uh, this 100 is kilograms of water, and this is the uh, specific heat capacity of the water. Second opportunity to earn this mark, the second mark, is to write 100 divided by 420,000. So that's four, two, and then four zeros. And that just shows that you've done this calculation already of 100 multiplied by 4,200. Next mark is for getting as an answer. So there's two ways to show this answer. The first one is 0 0.00024 degrees Celsius, or making sure you've got three zeros between the decimal place and the 24. Or an alternative way of writing that, and this is how your calculator may have shown it, is 2.4 times 10 to the power of minus 4. OK, so either of those is an acceptable way to mark that. And the third mark is for the units, which is degrees Celsius. So third, that's the fourth mark there. So one, two, three, four marks are available here. OK, so give yourself a mark out of four. So the total for this side is seven. 
you got four and three so give yourself a mark out of seven for this side and add to your seven your mark for six okay and you'll get yourself a mark out of 13 which you can just stick here out of 13 at the bottom so if you have got 10 or more out of 13 that's exceptionally well done okay if you've got less than six out of 13 then you've had some serious issues with this and you should probably have another go at this activity so now we have some questions okay so we've rearranged that equation uh, in all the different forms now at various points in this booklet so you should be able to find the correct equation if you look for it in the last couple pages in this booklet for each of these questions so compound a is an imaginary solid okay so we don't know what it is it's just a solid okay it uh, it's not real but we've used it for this it has a specific heat capacity of 1000 joules per kilograms per degree celsius you're going to need to know that when you're answering these questions okay so you're going to go through these questions and then go on to the next page there's questions a to d on this page and then on to page 11 where we go all the way up to question i okay then we've got some more questions okay a to d and following on from that, there is another page where it goes all the way up to, oh gosh, I. Okay, so there's a lot of questions to do here. So go through those, pause the question, pause the video whilst you work through them. I recommend you do two or three at a time, maybe even just one to start with, and have a go, do the question, and then watch the answer on the video and do gradually increase the number of questions you do so if you get the first one right great um brilliant and then you can just keep working through the answers and checking your work as you go through it because there's a lot of questions it's really good practice this will take you some time okay so do a question check your answer do another question check your answer if you start to do well do two or three questions then check your answers okay but be very careful uh, that you're making sure you're doing them right and you're getting them correct before you do all the questions wrong, which will just waste your time and you don't want to waste your time. You want to do well. OK, so pause the video now whilst you attempt the first of these questions, please. So let's go through those questions. So question one. A one kilogram block of compound A is heated, increasing its temperature by one degree Celsius. So we have some numbers here. It's one kilograms. It goes heated by one degree. We have the specific heat capacity given to us at the start of the question. How much energy? So it wants to know the amount of energy. OK, so our equation is going to start delta E. And so our first mark is for writing out the equation correctly. So you've written the equation out correctly, you can have a mark. Our second mark is for filling in the numbers. So 1 times 1,000 times 1. So that is 1 kilogram times 1,000 specific heat capacity times 1 degree Celsius. The third and fourth marks are for the answer of 1,000 and the units of joules. So give yourself a mark out of 4, please. Find that so you can see it. Mark out of 4. Okay, so well done if you got that right. Even if you got 3 out of 4, that's great. So... Go back to doing the questions if you need to before we move on to question B. Question B. A one kilogram block of compound A is heated, increasing its temperature by 10 degrees Celsius. How much energy has been added to the block? So it's a very similar question. It's one kilogram, so which is the same. It's a thousand joules per kilogram Celsius, okay, which is also the same. This time it's been heated to 10 degrees and we still want to know how much energy. So we're going to be using the same equation. So a mark for the same equation. This time, the second line is going to be 1 times 1,000 times 10, because it's 10 degrees Celsius. The third mark is for an answer of 10,000 joules, or 10,000 and joules, or capital J, being your unit. So again, it's a mark out of 4, please. Okay, well done. Make sure you're regularly pausing the video to go back and do questions and then check your answers. So moving on to question C. A one kilogram block of compound A is heated, increasing its energy by a thousand joules. How much warmer does it get? So it's the same mass, but this time it's had a thousand joules of energy. Okay, so we don't need to calculate energy, we've got energy. Now we want to know the temperature change. We need a different form of this equation. So we're going to start with change in temperature equals delta E divided by M multiplied by C. 
Okay, remembering that another way you could write this is delta theta equals delta E divided by M times C. Okay, so there's more than one way to write that. Then you get a mark for filling in the numbers. So 1,000 divided by 1 times 1,000. And we have a second opportunity to get that mark. So 1,000 divided by 1,000. And then your answer of 1 degree. Uh, so you get a mark for the 1 and a mark for degrees Celsius. So again, this is out of 4. So give yourself a mark out of 4. Moving on to question D. A one kilogram block of compound A is heated, increasing its energy by 3000 joules. How much warmer does it get? So this is similar to the last question. It's also one kilogram block. This time its energy is increased by 3000 joules, so it's more than that. And we want to know how much warmer it is, and we still have our specific heat capacity. So it's the same equation, different numbers. So delta theta is delta E divided by m multiplied by c. So the same first line as last time, the same rearranged version is also an option. And then we put in the numbers, so it's 3,000 divided by 1 times 1,000. Okay, another way of writing that is going to be 3,000 divided by 1,000, which just shows you've done these calculations. So that's another way of getting the mark for this line here. And then a final mark for your answer of 3 and the units of degrees Celsius. So again, this is a mark out of 4. So we're going to move on to the next question. Make sure you're pausing regularly to check your work, check your answers, and then continue. Question E. A one kilogram block of compound A is cooled, reducing its energy by 1,000 joules. What is the temperature change? So the mass is a kilogram. Uh, its energy is minus 1,000 joules because it's reduced. So make sure you use the negative number here. So it's going to be minus 1,000 joules. So what is the temperature change? So it wants to know delta theta. And you still have the specific heat capacity of 1,000 from the previous page. So our equation is going to be delta theta equals delta E divided by M times C. So you get a mark for that. Remembering that there's that alternative way of writing it where you make it so that Delta theta equals uh, delta E divided by M times C. That is an absolutely acceptable alternative version of that. Uh, then our filling in the numbers, minus 1,000, because that is our change in energy, divided by 1 times 1,000. Uh, an alternative way of getting that mark there is to write minus 1,000 divided by 1,000. Then our change in temperature is going to be minus 1, and it's going to be in degrees Celsius. So there's a mark out of four there. Okay, we're going to move on to the next question. Question F. A one kilogram block of compound A is at 20 degrees Celsius. So it's starting at 20 degrees. How much energy is needed to get it to be 30 degrees Celsius? So at one kilogram, starts at 20, ends up at 30, and they want to know how much energy. Okay, so you're going to be looking at E, delta E as the starting point of this equation. And you're also going to have to calculate the difference in temperature that you want. So how much higher than 20 degrees Celsius is 30? How much ten temperature increase is required here? That's what you need to do. Don't do 20 and 30, do a temperature increase here. So the first mark you're going to get here then is going to be for doing 30 degrees minus 20 degrees is going to equal... 10 degrees Celsius, and that is the amount we need for our temperature change. There is a mark for working out that your temperature change is 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're going to move on to the equations then. So, delta E is M times C times delta theta, so you get a mark for that. Then delta E is 1, which is the kilogram in mass, times 1,000, which is its specific heat capacity from the other page, multiplied by 10, which is the temperature change you've calculated here. So there's a mark there. Now, if you haven't written out this calculation for temperature change, but you have included the 10 here, you can have a mark for the 10 as well as for the equation. Okay, so as long as you've written 10 here, you get a mark for that, writing the 10, as well as for writing out the equation. Then our answer is 10,000, and our units are joules. So there are five marks for this question because there's the usual four plus the extra mark for working out that the energy change is 10. 
So we're going to move on to question G. Now, before we mark this, if you didn't get the calculation for energy change on the previous question, have another go at question G because it's the same concept, asking how much energy is required to get this from 25 degrees to 35 degrees. So you're going to have to do that same calculation as last time. So if you've made some errors here and you haven't done it for this, pause the video, have another go at question G, see if you can get it right before we mark it. So question G, a 10 kilogram block of compound A is at 25 degrees Celsius. How much energy is needed to get it to be 35 degrees Celsius? So its mass is 10 kilograms. It's starting out at 25, it's ending up at 35. Okay, so you need to know how much difference is that? And we wanna know how much energy is needed. So again, the first mark here, which hopefully you've got, especially if you paused it because you got it wrong last time, you're gonna be doing 35, degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius is going to give us a temperature change of 10 degrees Celsius. Now, if you've calculated that, you can have a mark. So our answer for this question, okay, it's the same equation as last time. So you get a mark for writing the equation out. You get a mark for, if you've shown it like this, that's another way of getting the mark. Okay, so you could put 35 minus 25 in there, or you could just put 10 in there. So either one of these is fine for getting the second mark, so for filling in the answers. And then the third mark is for the answer of 10,000, and the fourth mark, well, it's actually fourth and fifth, isn't it? Fourth mark's for 10,000, and the fifth mark is for joules, so it's a mark out of five. Okay, so if you got that right after getting F wrong, well done. That's all you need to do to be able to show improvement and learn from our mistakes that's a really important part of science and learning in general so we're going to move on and we're going on to question h a 10 kilogram block of compound a is at 25 degrees celsius how much energy is removed to get it to be 24 degrees celsius so again if you didn't remember to do these change in temperatures for questions f and g well, you didn't get them right have another go pause the video and see if you can check you've done this right before we do it and this time energy is being removed okay so <clears throat> let's move on to the answers so 25 degrees celsius take away 24 degrees celsius equals a change of one degree celsius so our answer here so you get a mark for that is it's the same, same equation, so delta E is M times C times delta theta. Then you fill in the numbers, so 10 times 1,000, because 10 kilograms times 1,000, which is specific heat capacity, and you could write it like this, mark 25, take away 24, or you could just write in the one. Either of these is acceptable, but you can only have what mark for one of them. Okay, so if you don't write it like this, you can have a mark for this one. And then the answer is 10,000 joules, and so you get a mark for the 10,000 and a mark for the joules. So again, this is a mark out of five. So question I, a five kilogram block of compound A is at 20 degrees Celsius. How much energy is needed to get it to be 24 degrees Celsius? So our five kilogram mass, it's starting out at 20 degrees, it's going to end up at 24 degrees. Don't forget to do the calculation of the energy change or the temperature change before you start the question. Feel free to pause it if you need to do that and check or change anything. Um, so we're going to answer that. So the first mark then is for doing uh, 24 minus 20, and that gives us 4 degrees Celsius. So that is our temperature change, and we are going to be calculating how much energy is required. So our equation is going to be the same one. It's going to start with delta E. And in case you get a mark for that, you get a mark for calculating the temperature change. Then you can put the numbers into the equation, and you can either do it like this, or you could just put in the number 4. depends how you've done it. Um, as long as you've done calculated that it's 4, you get a mark for putting the 4 in. Even if you've only put the 4 here or done it here, that is worth a mark in addition to the calculation. So... The answer is 20,000 and the units are joules. So again, this is a mark out of five. There are four for this and one for this. So give yourself a mark out of five. So for this section, the total mark available is 40. So if you could put a bubble or a square or something, give yourself a mark out of 40. So the last four questions were out of five 
and the first five questions were out of four each, giving us a total of 40. So if you have got less than 20 marks, okay, that tells me that something's gone quite wrong there in a few instances. So either, and we don't know where it's from, I don't know where it's from, you're going to have to look at this. So either you've been skipping parts of writing out the answers, so you've only been writing, say, the very last line out, we will only ever get half marks for that. Or you have been making some calculation errors. There's a lot of reasons why it could be, but if you've got less than 20 marks, you're either doing something very wrong or you're skipping things. Okay, If you're skipping it, then that just means you're losing really easy marks on the exam. If you're making mistakes, please feel free to email me or your teacher. And we're very happy to help you out with that, Okay, to explain anything you're not sure about. It will help if you're making mistakes to learn exactly what each of the symbols in that equation means. So which symbol represents temperature? Well, that's delta theta okay, and things like that, because that's going to help you put the right values into your equation. So if you've got more than 30, well done. You've done very well. Uh, if you've got more than 35, you've done exceptionally well. So now there's another set of questions that are quite long, a bit trickier than the last ones. OK, so we're going to move on to those. So we're going to use the values of specific heat capacity to answer the questions. So our values are here. OK, so water has a specific heat capacity of 4,180 joules per kilogram per Celsius. OK, so you have to use the correct number when it's water. When it talks about copper, it's 390. When it talks about glass, it's 840. Now, I'll be honest. OK, these start out in foundation tier territory, but very quickly they go through to higher tier territory and for the really high level marks. So you will get questions like these on both foundation and higher papers. But the simpler questions at the start, you're more likely to find on a foundation paper. And the more complex questions towards the end are going to be the kinds of questions that are going to differentiate between those top grades uh, in the higher tier. So let's have a go at those questions. Pause the video whilst you do them. Do one or two at a time at the start. Check your answers and keep pausing the video and keep doing a question or two, pause the video and marking it before you move on rather than do all of them wrong and waste your time. OK, so pause the video now. OK, so let's go through those. Which substance requires the least amount of energy to raise its temperature? So this is talking about the specific heat capacity. So copper requires the smallest amount of energy to raise its temperature. OK, so if you've written copper, you can have the mark. And the reason is because it's got the lower specific heat capacity. OK, so it only requires 390 joules of energy to raise one kilogram of copper by one degree Celsius. So the mark is for copper. I've just added in the explanation. Question B. How much energy is needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram of water by 10 degrees Celsius? So we have the specific heat capacity of water. We have the mass at one kilogram and we have the temperature change, which is 10 degrees Celsius. He wants to know how much energy. So that's going to give us the equation in this format. Delta E equals... So it's m times c times delta theta, which is a change in temperature. So it's one kilogram multiplied by the specific heat capacity, which is 4,180 for water, multiplied by 10 degrees Celsius, so get that mark for those, gives you an answer of 41,800, so you will be needing your calculator for these questions, and the units are joules, so give yourself a mark out of four for that. I strongly recommend using a calculator, which you should have been doing anyway, OK, uh, use the calculator on your phone if you need to, because you're at home. That's fine. Um, but you're likely to get these wrong. And in science, you're always allowed to use a calculator. And in science exams, every exam is a calculator exam. So use your calculator. Take advantage of that resource. Question C. How much energy is needed to increase the temperature of one kilogram of copper by 10 degrees Celsius. OK, so it wants to know how much energy. So it's going to be the same equation as last time. OK, this time we're in t the temperature is 1 kilogram and the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. And it's copper, just like it was water last time. This time it's copper. And you'll need to look up the value from the table at the top. So it's the same equation as last time. Delta E is m times c times delta theta. 
And then we fill in the numbers, which is 1 times 390, which is the value of copper, multiplied by 10 degrees Celsius. The answer is 3,900, and the units are joules. So give yourself a mark out of 4, please. Question D. A 1 kilogram block of copper is put into 2 kilograms of water. How much energy is needed to increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius? Okay, so the mass is 1 kilogram okay of copper and then we have two kilograms of water uh so one kilogram of copper and two kilograms of water how much energy is needed to increase the temperature by 10 degrees celsius so it wants to know about the energy now this is going to be complicated so i recommend the way you calculate this is you calculate it and an energy required to raise uh the two kilograms of water by 10 degrees celsius which will then raise the kilogram of copper by 10 degrees celsius and the reason for this is that if you think about this and you have to sort of visualize this, it's quite tricky. You need to have your beaker of water. OK. And that is then going to have our block of copper in it. OK, so there's our block of copper. We put in our copper into our water. There's our beaker of water. So we've got our water. We've got our copper now and we're going to apply heat. OK, and we're not necessarily going to burn it. It might be that we heat the water up by sticking in an immersion heater or something. So that water has to be heated by 10 degrees Celsius first before the copper block will be heated by the water. So calculate the energy required to heat two kilograms of water up, which will and then again, the energy required to heat one kilogram block of copper up. So that'll probably be two calculations. So let's have a look at that. Well, here we have the calculation for water. So we're using the same equation, uh, delta E is M times C times delta theta, and we're putting our units in, so it's 2 kilograms for water. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,180, and it's 10 degrees Celsius. And then our answer is 83,600, and our units is joules, so there's four marks for this section. Okay, then we're going to move on to uh, the specific heat capacity of copper. Okay, so it's 1 kilogram of copper. Um, by 10 degrees so I've just for some reason I've just written the answer out so the answer is 3,900 and the units are joules uh, it's the same equation so you can't have the mark again the if you've written that delta E equals one which is one kilogram times 390 times 10 you can have a mark for that I don't know why I didn't write that out I apologize okay so there's three marks for this section and then the final mark is for adding together the total for water and copper and getting yourself an answer of 8,000, 87,500 joules. Okay, so there are nine marks for this. Okay, so that's out of nine there. Four marks for calculating water, three marks for calculating copper, or whichever one you did first, you know, you can only get one mark for writing out this equation. And then two marks for getting your answer with the units of joules. All right, so we're going to move on. If you got this one wrong, which to be honest, wouldn't be surprising because you've never come across a question like this before and we've never had to do this before. Have a look, make sure you're happy with how we did this because a lot of the questions from this point onwards, and I'll be honest, these are all very difficult higher tier questions. They're going to be, they're going to be much more likely to come in a higher tier paper because they're going to really push you and they're going to be looking for the highest levels of grades for these sorts of questions. Okay, so if you are totally stuck on this, and, and you're probably a foundation tier question for a foundation tier student, don't stress too much about that, okay? Um, so we're going to move on, but before we do so, bear in mind how we've done this, rewatch how I've explained this if necessary, because the rest of the questions are very similar to this. Okay, so moving on to question E. A two kilogram block of copper is put in one kilogram of water. How much energy is needed to increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius? So this time it's two kilograms of copper and one kilogram of water. So it's the opposite of last time in terms of quantities. We still want to know how much energy and it increases by 10 degrees Celsius. So it's very similar to last time, just different numbers to give you a second chance to get this right. OK, so if you have gone straight on and done um, D and E together, and you're only just marking it now and you're thinking, oh, I've probably got this wrong because I got D wrong. Pause the video, have another go at this question now that you know what to do from D. And before you move on, practice it, have another go and see if you can get it right this time. 
So let's go through that. So there's a lot to this. So we'll start out with water. So for the first one, it might be copper, it might be water. I like to calculate the water because I think in my head, what has to be heated first? Well, the water's heating up the copper, so you have to heat up the water before you heat up the copper, okay? Because the water will be heating up that copper. So there's the equation. So you get a mark for writing out the equation, you get one mark for that. It doesn't matter whether you've done it for water or for uh, copper. As long as you've written out the equation, there's a mark. Then the water calculation is 1 times 4,180 times 10, so you have a mark for that. The answer is 41,800, and the units are joules. Then for copper, uh, we've already got the mark for the equation here. So the writing it out is 2 times 390 times 10, which gives us 7,800, and the units are joules. Then our answer is add the two together, okay? And you can't have marks for that because you've already got them. You get the mark for the answer that you get when you add them together, which is 49,600 and the units of joules. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So this is again out of 9. Question F. A 1 kilogram block of copper is put in 1 kilogram of water inside a glass jar of 1 kilogram. How much energy is needed to increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius? So again, you have to imagine the situation or the scenario. And so what we've got here is we've got ourselves a block of copper, which is inside some water. Okay, so it's underwater and the water is heating up the copper. And then that water is inside a glass jar. Okay, and the glass jar is being heated up by an external force or some other kind of heating apparatus. So maybe a Bunsen burner or something. And so to heat up the copper, we have to heat up the glass, which then has to heat up the water, which then has to heat up the block. And so this kind of explanation, or this, this scenario, is a much more realistic scenario when it comes to heating up a block of copper because you do have to put it into water, which then is in some kind of container. So this time, each of these three things needs to be accounted for. Now, helpfully, they all weigh one kilogram. So it's one kilogram of copper, one kilogram of water, and the glass is one kilogram. And we want to increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, and it wants to know how much energy that's going to use. So it's a very similar question to previously. And so we're gonna to have to think about uh, calculating the temperature change for the glass, the water, and the copper. Okay, so you have to do three calculations here and then add them all together. So similar to last time, instead of just being copper and water, it's glass, water, and copper in any order you like. So if you haven't accounted for all three of these, then I recommend you pause the video and have another go at the question uh, to give you another chance of getting it right before we move on. Okay, so let's do that. So the equation is the same as last time, the same as every time so far. Delta E is M times C times delta theta. Then for glass, that's 1 times 840 times 10, so you can have a mark for that, and the answer is 8,400 joules. Then let's do the same thing for water, so it's 1 times 4,180 times 10, and our answer is 41,800 joules. And a mark each for the answer and the unit again. And then we do the same again for the copper, 1 times 390 times 10, and the answer is 3,900, and the unit is joules. And finally, we're going to add all three of those together. You don't get a mark for this line, but you do get a mark for the answer, which is 54,100, and the units, which are joules. Okay, so that's a lot of calculations. It would have taken you a while to do this, but there's a lot of marks for this. Two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve marks for this. Okay, that is a lot of marks. So we're going to move on to question nine, sorry, question G. Okay, it's a similar question. So if you have already done question G and you've realised you've done it wrong or you've made some mistakes because it's the same principle as this, pause the video, have another go before you do, before we mark this, see if you can get it right. Question G. A one kilogram block of copper is put into one kilogram of water inside a glass jar of half a kilogram. How much energy is needed to increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius? So we have one kilogram of copper, one kilogram of water, and the glass jar is half a kilogram. We want to know how much energy, 
and the temperature increase is 10 degrees Celsius. So it's the same picture as before, okay, but this time the glass is just smaller, there's less of it. Okay, so it's almost going to be almost the same equations, just going to be one small change. So let's go through that. So we've got our equation that we're going to be using for all of them. We get a mark for that. The glass question equation is 0.5 times 840 times 10. And the answer is 4,200 and the units of joules. The next one is the water, which is identical to last time. So you get three marks here. And then the next one is copper, which is again identical to last time. So three marks here. And finally, we add them all together. And you get a mark for the answer, which is 49,900 and the units, which is joules. So again, this is going to be out of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we're going to move on to question H. Now, question H is very, very similar to the previous question. Okay, uh, again, it's just different values. So... A one kilogram block of copper is put in a one kilogram of water inside a copper beaker, not glass, but copper beaker of one kilogram. How much energy is required to increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius? So this time we have our copper block in the water, which is then in a copper container instead of a glass container. OK, a copper beaker, which is being heated. So. Very similar to our previous diagram, except instead of glass, it's now copper. And this is water. And this is also copper. So there's two lots of copper now. So let's do our calculations here. Now, there are other ways of calculating this than the way we've shown. And if you have done it a different way and you've got the same answers, please do speak to your teacher. Because actually, if you're getting the same answer, it means you're doing it correctly. And that is also worthy of getting all the marks. So for the copper here, we are doing the equation for a mark. Then 1 times 390 times 10, which is 3,900 joules, which is the same as before, because it's the same amount of copper as before. Then the water is again the same as before with the 41,800 joules. And then copper, once more, there's more copper. It's exactly the same as before, because it's a kilogram of copper in the beaker and a kilogram of copper in the middle. And you can calculate that that way. Now, you may have done, and this is where there's some different variations of this, you may have done, instead of two lots of this equation, you may have done two multiplied by 390 multiplied by 10 gives you 3,900 joules multiplied by 2. So you may have got an answer which gives you three thousand two lots of 3,900. So if you have done uh, delta E of copper, I'm just going to write Cu, as 2 times 390 times 10. Okay, I'm going to move that so you can see it. Okay, and then giving yourself the answer of 6,780 joules. Okay, that I'm going to give you the same amount of marks that you would have gotten here. So you can have six marks for that because it's exactly the same as working it out twice. Okay, so moving on. The total then is going to be 390 plus 390, sorry, 3,900 plus 41,800 plus 3,900, or you might have done uh, 41,800 plus the 6,780, which you calculated up here, okay? And it doesn't really matter how you've done that, because there aren't any marks for that. As long as you've got an answer of 49,600 and units of joules, you will get the marks. So for this one, it is another 12 mark question. OK, so moving on to question I. So for question I, three kilograms of water is in a two kilogram copper beaker. How much energy is needed to increase the temperature by five degrees Celsius? So we don't have a block of copper this time. We just have a copper beaker, okay, and inside that copper beaker is water, okay, and we can label that. So we have copper beaker and we have water. And our copper beaker is three, uh, two kilograms and our water is three kilograms. Okay, so we're dealing with some slightly larger amounts now. So how much energy, so we've got our three kilograms of water, two kilograms of copper, 
at how much energy is needed to increase temperature by 5 degrees Celsius. So slightly different version of this, same equation. So uh, delta E is M times C times delta theta. So you get a mark for the equation. For copper, it's 2 kilograms by 390 multiplied by 5, which gives us 3,900 and their units of joules. Then for the water, it's 3 kilograms by 4,180 multiplied by 5, which gives us 62,700 and the units are joules. We add those together. No marks for putting the numbers in here, but you do get marks for 66,600 as the answer and joules. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So you get a mark out of 9 for this question. So at the end of this section, from A to I, the total available marks is 71. Okay, so give yourself a mark out of 71 for this section. Okay, so if you have got more than 60 marks, you've done incredibly well. If you have got more than 50 marks, you've still done very well. If you have got more than 35 marks, so more than half marks basically, then you are still a higher tier student. You've done that well, okay? Now, if you've struggled with this, okay, and you've got less than 30, 35 marks, then don't worry, okay? Because these are hard. They're really, really hard. There's a lot to think about, and that's fine, okay? If that's because you have not understood it or just struggled with it, please talk to your teacher, and they will help you to understand it, okay? But uh, if the reason you've got 30 marks or less is because you just haven't been writing out the steps, then that is just really unfortunate because that's essentially lazy practice. And by not writing out all the steps, you miss out on valuable marks, which means you will not do as well as you are capable of. OK, so this is a sort of two pronged statement. If you have done not so well and that's because you didn't understand, don't worry, we are happy to help you and you can improve. If you haven't done well because you've been lazy and you've not written it out, you need to put the work in. You need to write it all out as much as you might hate doing that because that is what gets you easy marks in the exam. This is stuff you know. To get the mark, you just need to write things you already know down on paper and you will get more marks in your exams. Okay, so there's another section which I'd like you to have another go at. It starts out easier and gets harder. Okay, so it starts out easier than these. And that's on page 12, and it's these questions here. And you need to calculate your answers to three significant figures. So these questions in the exam, they love to say, do your answer to however many significant figures. And if you do it to a different number of significant figures, they do not give you the mark. You get it wrong because you've not followed the instructions. So I'm giving you that warning ahead of time. You have to give your answers to three significant figures. Okay, so... If you can't know what three significant figures is or what significant figures are, okay, look that up. Find out. You do know. We have this information. If you need help with that, speak to your teacher, math teacher or science teacher, and we're all willing to help you. So these questions do go on a bit. So it's not just A to D here. It goes on to question I on page 13. So pause the video, work through those, and make sure that you don't do too many at once, that you're checking your answers, uh, as working through the video, pause, check an answer, keep pausing and work through them a couple of questions at a time. Okay, so pause the video whilst you work through those questions. Okay, so let's go through those. Question A, 10,000 joules is added to one kilogram of water. How much does the water temperature increase by? So we have our energy, we have our mass, we know that water, uh, we know that it has its specific heat capacity a couple pages back, and we want to know how much the temperature increases. So our equation is going to start delta theta, and that equals delta E divided by M times C, so you get a mark for the equation. Remembering that you can write that, that delta theta equals delta E, big line, and then M times C below it. That is an alternative way of writing that. That's also worth the mark. Then we're going to put in the numbers. So 10,000 divided by 1 times 4180. You have a mark for that. Or alternately, you can write it as just 10,000 divided by 4180, which shows you've done this calculation. And that's another way of getting the second mark. 
The answer is 2.39. It has to be precise. It has to be 2.39. No other answer is acceptable. So if you've only written 2.4 or if you've written 2.39, something or other, that is not correct because it has to be to three significant figures. And the unit is degrees Celsius. So there are four marks here. So give yourself a mark out of four. Question B. 10,000 joules is added to one kilogram of copper. How much does the copper temperature increase by? Okay, so it's the same question, but with a different material. So it's still 10,000 joules, it's still one kilogram. They still want to know about the temperature increase. This time, instead of water, you use the specific heat capacity for copper. So let's go through that. So it's the same equation as last time for a mark. Then 10,000 divided by one times 390, or just 10,000 divided by 390 is another way of getting the mark for this line. And then the answer is 25.6. It has to be precise. It cannot be anything other than that. And the units is degrees Celsius. So again, that's a mark out of four. Question C. 10,000 joules is added to one kilogram of glass. How much does the glass temperature increase by? So this time, it's again just a change in material. So making sure that you know uh, the specific heat capacity of glass. And we want to know the temperature increase again. Very similar equation. So let's go through that. So again, it's the same delta theta equals delta E divided by M times C. And you can still write it in that format we have at the top uh, if you want. And then it's 10,000 divided by 1 times 840 or just 10,000 divided by 840. That's another way of getting the second mark. The answer is 11.9. It has to be precisely that, remember. And the units of degrees Celsius. So again, it's a mark out of four. Question D. 20,000 joules is added to four kilograms of copper. How much does the copper temperature increase by? So there's a few different things here. It's going to be similar to question B where we use copper, but instead of 10,000 joules, it's 20,000 joules. So let's go through that. So it's the same equation we've been using all the way through. This time it's 20,000 divided by 4 multiplied by 390. Alternative, you can do 20,000 divided by 1,560 as an alternative way of getting that, that mark for the second line. The answer is 12.8 and the units are degrees C. So give yourself a mark out of 4. Question E. 5,000 joules is added to 5 kilograms of water. How much does the water temperature increase by? So it's the same question, but it's different values for the temperature increase. Sorry, it's different values for the uh, energy input and the mass, and it's water this time. So same equation as before, because we're looking for a change in temperature. So you have the mark for that. Then it's 5,000 divided by 5 times 4180. Or you can write 5,000 divided by 20,900 as an alternative way of writing it. It shows you've done 5 multiplied by 4 and, eight, and you've done that calculation already. The answer is 0 0.239 and the units are degrees Celsius. So give yourself a mark out of 4 for that. Question F. 20,000 joules is added to 1 kilogram of water in a copper beaker of 1 kilogram. How much does the temperature increase by? OK, so very much like before, you have to do two sets of questions. OK, so this time we've got a beaker made of copper and uh, inside the copper beaker is water. So I'm just going to draw this on the back of this. So you've got a copper beaker with water inside it. So you've got water and copper. So the copper needs to be heated uh, using the 20,000 joules, which will then heat up the water as well. OK, so this one's complex. OK, so you get the same mark for this previous equation. So delta theta equals delta E divided by M times C. Now this time you're doing your 20,000 joules of energy and you're going to divide it by the mass, which is one kilogram of both. OK, and you're going to add together the specific heat capacity of the two. So one kilogram with the specific heat capacity of water added to the specific heat capacity of copper. OK, so that is worth a mark, that line here, putting into both of those. Then it's 20,000 divided by the sum of that, which is 4570. That's worth another mark. So it's not two separate marks this time. So it's not just one mark you can get two different ways. This is two separate marks. So the answer is 4.38 degrees Celsius. So this time the mark is out of five. Now, this is going to be a feature going onwards through the rest of the questions that we're doing more than one material. OK, so if they're the same mass, then you can just add together their specific heat capacities. If they are different masses, 
then you are going to have to do each of those separately. So you'll have to have the mass times the specific heat capacity of this one and the mass times the specific heat capacity of the other material. And you're going to have to put those in so it's going to be multiple m times c. Okay, so if you're not sure uh, how to do that, please do speak with your teacher or have a go at the questions and you'll see how it works going onwards. I recommend pausing the video and checking your method for the next few questions if you've already done some of them, because you might find that you've done them quite differently. Most people get this wrong the first time they do it. If you did get that right, well done. You should be very proud of yourself because that's really tricky and it's a really difficult concept uh, to get and to be able to think of doing yourself. So we're going to move on to question G now. 20,000 joules, so just like last time, 20,000 joules is added this time to 2 kilograms of water in a copper beaker of 1 kilogram. So because they have different masses, we're going to have to treat these as two separate parts. Again, what's the temperature increase? So the way we do this question is it's the same equation. So you get the same mark for the equation. Then we need to treat the two quantities separately. So it's 20,000 joules divided by, and you'll notice there's lots of brackets here. So two times 4180, so that's the two kilograms multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water, added to one kilogram multiplied by the specific heat capacity of copper. So you've dealt with water here and copper here added together. And so you can have a mark for that line, or you can have a mark for this line, I don't mind which. And okay, so that gives us 20,000 divided by 8360 plus 390. And then you get a mark with a th this line here where you've done the two together. So 20,000 divided by 8750. And that gives us 2.29 as our answer and degrees Celsius as our units. OK, so this is a mark out of five again. OK, so hopefully you understood how we've done that. We've treated our two separate materials separately because they have different masses and we could have done it this way for our first question which would have just been one times four one eight oh and one times three nine oh you would have the same effect and you would have still got to that so that's fine okay so next question h fifteen thousand joules is to be added to two kilograms of water in a copper beaker of one kilogram at 20 degrees celsius what will the new temperature be? Okay, so it is the same equation, the change in temperature. Okay, so mark for the using the equation, and it's 15,000 joules divided by, and because they're two different quantities, again, we're going to treat them separately. So two times uh, the specific heat capacity of water added to one times the specific heat capacity of copper. So you get mark for this equation. And then this is it where you've just done the calculations. This is 2 by 4 by 8, oh, gives us 8360. Oh. 1 by 390 gives us 390. So that's another way of earning a mark for this first line. And then you get a third mark here for 1500 divided by 8750. Oh, so you've added together the sum of all the masses multiplied by the individual specific heat capacities. And then we have our answer 1.71 and our units, which is degrees Celsius. Now, so 1.7 is not the end of our question. We need to calculate the new temperature because it started out at 20 degrees Celsius. We've got to add our temperature change of 1.71, giving us 21.7. And so you get a mark for the 21.7 being our final answer. You don't get another mark for writing the units again because you've already got that mark here. So this one's out of six. So moving on to question I. Two kilograms of water at 30 degrees Celsius is poured into a one kilogram copper beaker at 20 degrees Celsius. What will the temperature of the water and the copper beaker be together? So essentially it's saying we have this item here, we have two grams of water, which is 30 degrees Celsius, and we also have one kilogram of, uh, one kilogram of copper at 20 degrees Celsius. If we mix these two materials and allow them to come to a new temperature, uh, a new equilibrium, what is that new temperature going to be? Okay, so this is a really tricky one, quite different to all the other questions we've had. So I'm going to work through this one slowly. So first of all, okay, we're going to talk about the energy. We need to calculate the amount of energy that's used to produce these temperatures. So the energy equation is here. So the amount of energy required to uh, bring two kilograms of water to 30 degrees C is what we're going to calculate. So 2 times 4180 times 30, that's the mass, the specific heat capacity, and the temperature change 
of the water. We're just going to change it from zero to 30, so the temperature of the water is 30. And then our answer for that is 250,800 joules. So there's a mark out of four there. Then we're going to work the same thing out for the copper. Okay, so it's one, uh, it's one kilogram times three. Uh, multiplied by 20, because it's 20 degrees Celsius. That gives us 7,800 and the units are joules. So there's another three marks. Then we have to add these together, and that gives us 258,600 and the units are joules. Okay, so that is the total amount of energy from both of them. Now, what we need to do is take that total amount of energy and divide it equally between the two amounts of materials. So now we're looking at temperature change is change energy divided by mass times specific heat capacity. So new equation, new mark. Uh, so that gives us the 258,600, which is our total energy from up here, divided by two kilograms of water which has a specific heat capacity of what 4180 and one kilogram of copper which has a specific heat capacity of 390 so you get a mark for this and then the second opportunity to earn this mark if you've written it this way so same equation but instead of writing it out in long form we've already done the two times 4180 which gives us 8360 and we've done one times 390 which gives us 390. And then third mark on this section is that to add those together, so it's 258600 divided by 8750, and that gives us total uh, temperature of 29.6 degrees Celsius, which is our answer. That is the temperature that the water and copper will mix together at, and they will become. Now, you might think that's a really odd answer, because surely if the water is 30 degrees and the copper is 20 degrees, then it's going to be about halfway between. So you'd expect to be around 25. But then you might have thought, well, actually, hang on. There's more water than there is copper. So it's going to be a bit closer to water. So maybe it's going to be more like 27, 28. But actually, that isn't quite how it works. You have to look at the specific heat capacity. And when you look at the specific heat capacity, the specific heat capacity of water is 4,180. So it takes a lot of energy to heat up every kilogram of water whereas it only takes up 390 joules of energy for every kilogram of copper. So it's much easier to heat copper up. So the amount of energy brought to this total from the water is a huge amount. The amount of energy brought to this from the copper is a very small amount. So in fact, the two together, the, the fact that the copper is only at 20 degrees isn't going to make much difference because it didn't require much energy to heat it up. And in fact, adding another 10 degrees of energy uh, a temperature to the copper is only going to take a tiny fraction away from this. OK, so that means that it's going to be very, very close to the 30 degrees Celsius, which is what it is. It's 29.6 because most of the energy goes into heating the water and a very small fraction goes into heating the copper, even though it started out much colder. OK, so. This question had a total of 14 marks available, so it was quite a lot. This is a very hard, very difficult, very high level question. This is only going to be for those exceptionally high grades. We're talking level nine here. OK, so <clears throat> don't be distressed if you didn't manage this. In fact, if, even if you got completely stuck and didn't and got no marks on this. OK, do not stress now. If you just sat there and I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm panicked, then see if you could do anything. Because actually a lot of you would have been able to get these marks here, which is a good significant quantity of them. Uh, if you thought, well, what can I calculate? Because energy is one of the few things you can calculate with these. OK, so let's add up all the points for this together. There's quite a lot of marks available for this section. So there's a grand total of 50 marks available for this entire section. OK, so give yourself a mark out of 50. If you have got more than 30, you're doing very well because these are very difficult questions. OK, if you have got less than 10, then you've either just completely not understood this, which in which case you need to speak to your teacher. For some of you, that's not going to be a disaster. And for some of you, especially if you're in the higher tier, that is something you really do need to address. Uh, alternatively, if you've got quite a low score, sort of 10 or 20, and you've been getting the answers right, that tells me that actually you just haven't been doing the work. You haven't been writing out all the steps. 
which is a really quick way of losing marks in the exam. The easiest way to gain marks is write out all the steps because you will always be given maximum marks that way if you get it right. And even if you get it wrong, you still get marks despite your errors because you've shown that you understand what you're doing and you can do the steps towards the answer. All right, so we're going to move on. So the second to last activity for this lesson is the knowledge and application check on page 14. Now there are 12 questions here. So pause the video, take your time and answer the questions. Then we'll go through them together. Okay, so let's go through these questions. Question one, make C the subject of the equation. So the rearranged version of this equation is going to look like this. That's worth a mark. There is an alternative rearrangement of this equation, as you can see here. It's the same equation. It just looks and it's presented differently. It's question two, make M the subject of the equation. So here we have the answer for M. So it's delta E divided by C times delta theta. And again, this is the slightly different way of presenting that. They're both the same equation, just a slightly different presentation. Third question, make delta theta, change in temperature, the subject of the equation. And here we have the answer for that one. So whichever format you've written it in, each is worth one mark. Question four, why will copper get hotter quicker than water? And that's because it's got a lower specific heat capacity. So if you talked about the lower specific heat capacity, that's worth a mark. Mm, mm. And the idea that it takes less energy to heat up one kilogram of, of copper by one degree Celsius than it does take up than it does energy to heat up one kilogram of water by one degree. Question five, which will heat quicker, one kilogram of water or two kilogram of water? Well, you have a mark for the answer, which is simply one kilogram of water. Now, the, <clears throat> the explanation for that is that that's going to require half the amount of energy needed to heat two kilograms of water, or alternately, two kilograms of water is going to need twice as much energy to heat as one kilogram of water. But it didn't ask you for the explanation, it asked you for the answer, which is one kilogram. Question six. Name the unit of specific heat capacity. So the unit of specific heat capacity is joules per kilograms degrees Celsius. Question seven, list the three organelles found in plant cells, but not in animal cells. So that is the cell wall, the permanent vacuole, and the chloroplasts. And those are worth one mark each. Question eight, water has a specific heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram degrees C. How much energy raises one kilogram by one degree Celsius? Well, the answer is 4,200. Alternately, uh, the units are joules, by the way. Alternately, if you've written 4,180, which is a more accurate answer, based on the information we've been using throughout the lesson, then you can also have the mark for that. Both are acceptable. Question nine, why are chips cooked in oil and not water? Well, there are two potential answers. The first one is about specific heat capacity. So, Oil has a much lower specific heat capacity than water, so it requires much less energy to heat it up. Alternately, you can say that chips need to be heated to several hundred degrees Celsius, and water will evaporate before this because it can only reach 100 degrees Celsius and remain as water, otherwise it will become um, steam. So either of those is acceptable answer for that question. Question 10. In summer during the day, why does the breeze come in from the sea during the day? So there's kind of four points to this question. So the first of all, the specific heat capacity of water is much higher than land. So the land is going to heat up quicker than the sea because it doesn't take as much energy to heat it up. Next mark is for saying that the air above the land also gets heated more quickly than the air above the sea, simply because the land heats up faster than the sea does. So that helps heat the air up above it. Third mark is for saying that the hot air above the land is going to rise and the cooler air above the sea is going to sink. And we talk about hotter and cooler, we mean relative to each other. So hotter air above the land rises and cooler air above the sea is going to sink. And then lastly, this produces a convection current. So if you say the word convection current, you get a mark. And uh, to the fifth mark then, saying that the air near the ground moves from the sea towards the land. You could have got marks for drawing a diagram of this as well, um, but you would need to have explained quite a bit of it as well about, this, about the other points. Okay, 
So, the two marks here for explaining how the air moves, um, you could have got a mark for if you'd drawn a diagram. The other three marks around convection current and the first two points, you would need to have explained in words. Question 11. Where in the cell is genetic material found? Well, that would be the nucleus. And question 12. Where in the cell does protein synthesis occur? And that is in ribosomes. So once you've done that, give yourself a mark out of 19. There are 19 marks available there. You want to be getting five or six out of eight, really, in the first eight questions, um, because those are the really core essential questions. After that, it's much more applied knowledge. 11 and 12 are from previous knowledge. Um, question 10 is applied a higher level knowledge of applied knowledge so don't worry too much if you haven't got all the marks for questions 9 and 10 so it's going to depend on where you've dropped marks as to what level of marks is acceptable but you'd be looking to have gained at least 10 marks ideally for this so if you've got 10 or more that's well done if you've got more than 15 that's excellent work if you've really struggled to get sort of more than six in this um quiz here then really there's some things you need to look back on and, and focus on questions 1 to 8 and 11 and 12 as well. Okay, so last task before we move on. So your last task is to watch the lesson summary video, which is at this YouTube link. Uh, now you can type this in, or if you've got a digital copy of this, uh, which you should have, then you should be able to just click on the link and it'll take you to the website. So once you've done that, that's all you need to do for this lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to email or Contact myself or your teacher and we'll be very happy to help you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go through those. Question one, make C the subject of the equation. So C equals delta E divided by M times delta theta. Another way of writing this is C equals delta E with a line M times delta theta. Okay, next question two, uh, rearrange the equation to make M the subject. So M equals delta theta divided by C times delta, sorry, M equals delta E divided by C times delta theta. Again, another way of writing this is very similar to last time. Okay. 